Hello! For this video, we will be talking about a special kind of shortest path problem where the graph is an acyclic digraph. So what is an acyclic digraph? Based on the definition, an acyclic digraph is a directed graph without cycles. Now, you will know if uh, a graph is an acyclic digraph if and only if its nodes can be numbered such that every arc ij has i less than j. To illustrate uh, this definition of an acyclic digraph where the nodes can be numbered such that every arc ij has i less than j, let me go to this particular example. As you can see, uh, what we have here is a graph and I deliberately removed all the labels in the node. Why? Uh, in, in the graph. Why? Because if we can label the nodes such that every arc ij has i less than j, then we can show that this graph is an acyclic digraph. Okay, so for this example, our goal is to be able to label these nodes, these eight nodes, uh, with labels such that if you get all the arcs, so all the connections between two nodes, your origin, your i, your i will always be in quotation marks less than your j or your destination. So let us say we'd like to start labeling the nodes with, uh, with letters, for example. So I think I can label this node with uh, node a, let's say. Sorry. A. And because this node is already labeled as node A, I think I can label this node as B. And this node C and this node D. Next, we can label this node E. F, G, and H. <clears throat> and as you can see, if you inspect all the, all the arcs in the graph, you have your origin less than your destination. So let me give you an example. Let's say this arc. This arc is arc EH. And in this case, E is less than, in quotation marks, or... Uh, e is alphabetically first, appears first in the alphabet compared to H. Now, you might notice that, that there are a lot of ways in which you can uh, label a certain graph. For example, in this case, let me, let me relabel the, the graph differently. Okay, so I will still be labeling this node A and this node B. And let's say I will label this node C, and then I will label node uh, this node with the D, and then E, F, G, and H. And even if the, the this way of labeling the nodes is different from the way we labeled. Uh, this graph uh, previously, it doesn't matter because these uh, these uh, letters are simply just uh, labels to your nodes. What is more important here is that every arc in this graph has an i or has an origin less than your destination. The acyclic digraph solution method is also a labeling uh, algorithm. In fact, the, the solution method for a cyclic digraph uh, labels the nodes the same way as the Dijkstra's algorithm labels its nodes. No? As you can see, the label will always look like this. Whether, it's the, uh, whether we are using the Dijkstra's algorithm or this uh, solution method for the acyclic digraph. Okay? Now, because the acyclic digraph has a special property where your graph is a directed graph and at the same time it doesn't contain any cycles, the 
steps in the algorithm is very, very simple. In fact, we just have two generic steps. Step 0, which is our initial initialization, and step K, depending on what uh, node we are in currently. What I'd like you to do is to read through the, the solution method first and uh, try to understand it. However, what I'll do right now is to explain to you in, in plain English no? or in, in pseudocode how the uh, solution method works. Okay? Now, in the initialization phase or in the initialization step, what uh, you are going to do is you have to um, check first if your graph is an acyclic digraph. So the first thing you have to do is to number or label the nodes uh, in your graph such that each arc ij has i less than j. In this uh, solution method, the assumption is that your your nodes will be labeled using numbers. Okay? And the origin is labeled uh, as zero. Now, um, part of the initialization is to label node zero or the origin with a zero dash. And in this case, you, you let a constant k be equal to one. What is k in this case? k will represent the current node you are at okay so after initial initializing your origin you're setting k to be the next node in the graph k equals one now for step k what will happen is a, a two-step process first you check if uh, the particular node in this case node k has an in, uh, has no inbound arcs if there are no inbound arcs then you label node k with an infinity sign comma dash. No? Why infinity? Because this is still a shortest path algorithm. And if node k does not have or does not contain any inbound arc, papasok na arc, then there is no way for us to move from the origin to this particular node k. And that is why the distance of the shortest path from the origin to a, to a node k where k has no inbound arc is infinity. <clears throat> However, if there are uh, inbound arcs, no? at least one inbound arc in, uh, in, in node k, what you have to do is you have to compute for u sub k. u sub k, if you remember the Dijkstra's algorithm, is the distance of the shortest path from the origin to node k, not this particular node k. And u sub k is equal to the minimum of u sub i plus the i k, as long as or given i k exists. Now, what does this mean, i k exists? Remember that in step k, we are currently in that particular node. Therefore, this condition where i k exists means that um, for every node that has an inbound arc towards k, no, towards k, you compute for this because i represents the uh, node of origin. After computing for the minimum, you give the uh, you give node k the label u sub k comma i and then you repeat the process for k equals k plus one or essentially you move uh, to the next node now it will be easier for us to understand the algorithm if we actually do it uh, using the example okay so again we have this example and i've labeled already the the nodes such that i is less than uh, j. In this case, I didn't use uh, numbers. I used letters. But I think we can understand when we say k equals k plus 1 essentially means we're moving to the next letter. Okay? Now, uh, in, the same, in the same manner with uh, the, the Dijkstra's algorithm, we will label the nodes or we will solve uh, the, the shortest path problem this way. 
No? So we have the nodes and the, its corresponding labels. And according to the algorithm, we start with the origin. And we label it zero dash. And then we move to the next node, which is node B. And according to the to the algorithm, in node K, what you have to do is you look for the inbound arcs. If there are a lot of inbound arcs, you compute for this minimum. So looking at this example, <clears throat> uh, given that we are already in node B, there is only one inbound arc. Therefore, we don't have to get the minimum because uh, this in itself is the minimum already because you're only choosing uh, among one one choice. No, it's lang yung choice. So the label for node B is a u sub a plus d of a b comma a and in this case this is equal to a zero no plus five comma a okay so let me fix this the label for node b is actually a 5 comma a and then according to the algorithm we move to the next uh, node so k equals k plus 1 or in this case we move to the next letter node c and if you look at node c there are two inbound arcs one coming from a the other one coming from b so technically we need to compare and look for the minimum of u sub i plus d i k, where i are the different uh, nodes with an incoming or inbound arc towards k. So in this case, your i's are node a and node b. If i equals a, then the label is a u sub a plus d a c comma a. And we need to compare this with versus a u sub b plus the distance from b c. No? And computing this is a 0 because of this plus d a c is a 6. So this is a 6 a versus u sub b is a 5 and d of b c is a 4. So 5 plus 4 is a 9b. And because we're looking for the shortest path, we don't choose this because we, we are choosing the minimum. So for node C, the label has to be a 6a. Okay? Now, uh, moving on, we move to node B. And what should be the label for node D? If you look at node D, there are two incoming or inbound arcs again. Come, one coming from A, the other one coming from C. So you are comparing two labels, which is uh, 0 plus 9, so 9A, versus 6, because U sub C is 6. So 6 plus 5, that is 11. And because 9 is lower than 11, therefore, the label for D is a 9, comma, A. Now, we move to the next node, E. E only has a single uh, inbound arc coming from C. Therefore, the label is very easy. That is a U sub C. So that is a 6 plus 2. So that's an 8, comma, C. We move to the next node, F. So let me just write everything, G and then H. So moving to F, if you look at F, there are again two inbound arcs. One coming from B, so that is a 5 plus 4, that is a 9B, versus the other one coming from E, which is 8 plus 3, 11. So 11 is bigger than 9, therefore the label for F is a 9, comma, B. 
<clears throat> Next, for node G, there are again two inbound arcs, one coming from E. So that's an E, that's an 8 plus 5, that's a 13. Versus coming from F, that's a 9 plus 6, it's a 15. So the label for G is 13 E. And finally, for node H, there are three inbound arcs. So you are comparing U sub D, which is 9, plus 7, that's a 16, versus U sub E is 8, plus 2, that's a 10. And finally, U sub G is a 13, plus 5, that's an 18. So the lowest uh, distance is a 10, and it will come from E. And once you reach the last uh, node, you can stop the algorithm. And given this table of uh, labels, we can now look for the shortest path from A, from a single node A, to all the other nodes using the same um, technique you know, we did in Dijkstra's. So for example, for example, if you want to look for the shortest path from A to H, then all you have to do is uh, go to the end H, and according to this lab table, H, the label for H is 10E, therefore, you have to go through E first, and then looking at E, the label is an 8C, so you have to move to, uh, go through C first. And then finally, looking at the label for C, you have 6A, therefore, you go to uh, you go through A first. And as you can see, a movement from A to C to E and then to H gives us, so 6 plus 2 plus 2 gives us a total distance, no? total distance of 10. And this is your shortest path.